In this video, we're going to talk about the factors affecting rates of chemical reactions. However, before we start discussing those factors, let's start with the collision theory and a short explanation on the relationship between collisions and the rate of reaction. Let's first figure out what is the basis for a reaction to occur in the first place. Now, this is where collision theory comes in. For a reaction to occur, the reactant particles must first collide. And when they collide, the particles must move with sufficient energy, which we call activation energy, which is abbreviated as EA. On top of that, the particles will need to be properly oriented. Otherwise, no reaction will occur. Once the reactant particles fulfill these three criteria, that's how new products are formed. That's when chemical reaction occurred. Now we move on to the rate of the reaction. Basically, when the number of collisions increases, the rate of the reaction will increase as well. As more and more reactants collide with each other, more products will be formed. And that translates to the increased rate of reaction. The opposite is true when we have lesser collision, that translates to lower rate of reaction. Now we can express the rate of reaction in an equation. Here's the equation for the first order reaction where k is the rate constant and it's equals to a times e raised to the negative ea over rt. This is the Arrhenius equation. Now that we know what's the basis for a chemical reaction to occur and the relationship between collisions and the rate of reaction, let's now move on to the factors affecting rates of chemical reaction. There are basically four factors, concentration, surface area, temperature, and catalyst. So we're going to start with the first one, which is the concentration of the reactants. Let's say we start with this amount of reactants and we got some reaction happening. Now, if we were to increase the concentration of the reactants, that means we're going to have more blue and red reactants. And that means the chances of the two types of the reactants colliding with each other is going to increase. And that translates to increased rate of reaction. So the relationship between concentration and rate is directly proportional. Meaning, if we increase the concentration of the reactants, the rate will increase. If we decrease the concentration of the reactants, then the rate will decrease as well. Now if we look at the rate equation, rate is equals to K times the concentration of the reactant. So as we can see in the equation, rate indeed is proportional to the concentration of our reactant. Now we move on to our second factor, which is the surface area of the reactant. In this case, we're talking about the reactant that is solid. So let's say we have a lump of a large solid particle. That surface of our red solid that is in contact with the blue particles, that part will undergo reaction. The other part that is in the inner part of the red particle, that solid particle, because they are not in contact with the blue particles, they will not undergo reaction. So only the surface of the red particle that is in contact with the other reactant particle will undergo reaction. So now, let's say we were to crush this large particle into small bits like this, like maybe a powdered form. That means we now have more surface of the solid particle in contact with our blue particles. More contact area means larger surface area. So that means the large particle has smaller surface area, whereas the small particle has larger surface area. As we increase the surface area of our solid reactant, that will increase the collisions between the particles, therefore increasing the rate of the reaction. So the relationship between the surface area and the rate is directly proportional. On to our third factor, which is the temperature. Let's say we have a system at a relatively low temperature. Since the temperature is low, that means the average kinetic energy of the particle is low. This can be explained using the kinetic molecular theory, whereby the temperature of a substance is related to the average kinetic energy of the particles of that substance. Now, if we were to ramp up the temperature of the system, that means the kinetic energy of the particle is increased. That means a higher proportion of the particle is going to have minimum energy that is necessary for that effective collision. That means more collision is going to happen. And that means the rate of the reaction is going to increase. 
Therefore, generally, when temperature is increased, the rate of the reaction will increase as well. And we can look at this relationship using the equation as well. You just need to look at this mathematically. If you increase T, that is going to increase K, which in turn is going to increase the rate of the reaction. Now on to our final factor, which is the catalyst. The role of a catalyst is to lower the activation energy of the reaction without getting consumed. In a regular chemical reaction without any catalyst, it's going to require a certain amount of energy for that reaction to occur. That certain amount of energy is the activation energy, Ea. Now, when we add catalyst, the activation energy is lowered. That means if we refer to our rate equation, K is going to get increased, and as a result, our rate will increase as well. Therefore, when we add catalyst, it's going to speed up the reaction. To sum it up, these are the four factors that affect the rates of chemical reaction. When we increase these factors, the rates of chemical reaction will increase as well. If you're interested in a practice problem predicting how these factors will influence the rate of a reaction, definitely check out the next video that's coming out in this series. Here are the two videos that I've handpicked for you. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe. Your support means a lot to me.